Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity. Today we're going to be talking about self-care for the caregiver. That's right. And one of the reasons that we're on Zoom today is I need to take some time after a really long week teaching kids with special needs and doing things that I'm not terribly comfortable with because I'm in a new role and I'm exhausted and my neighbor's mowing his lawn. So I'm exhausted. We couldn't make the drive to be together. So we're gonna zoom this out and talk about self-care because that's what I'm gonna do when we finish this video. I'm gonna take some time to be myself and to regroup after a really hectic week. And what I did after work today, before I Zoom with Roberta's, I went for a quick hike to Good decompress. Thing. So. Good thinking. Nice. And that is one of the things recommended by Heart, Harvard Healthcare in their blog it titled Self-Care for the Caregiver. Mm -hmm. One of the first things they recommend is to be kind to yourself and be compassionate. Because in order to be an effective caregiver, you need to be well balanced and focused. That your, your optimum abilities come from being cared for by yourself. So self care makes you a better caregiver. While you might feel guilty in the moment taking that time for yourself, it's you important. Keep it in the front of your mind that what you're doing is making yourself a better caregiver because you're going to be more present. You're going to be more effective. You're going to be less stressed and, and anxious and better able to focus on the tasks that you need. It's to kind do. of like when you're on the airplane, right? They teach you to put the mask on right. the air mask first so you can help take care of other people who may not be able to take care of themselves. Right. And they teach you the same thing when you're talking about crisis prevention. They'll say your safety is tantamount. Oh, also in first aid training, they will tell you your safety is tantamount to helping anyone around you. So if you're on an airplane, you put your mask on first. If you're in a crisis situation, you make sure that you're safe first. If you're administering CPR or first aid, make sure that you are safe first and foremost, because you can't help anybody if you're dead. Right. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> a, a, quick, a quick way to provide yourself with 10 minutes of self-care, all you can manage in a day is 10 minutes. Focus on your breathing. Practice a simple breath awareness which is so, it's so simple because breathing is something you have to do. So you just find yourself a comfortable position like a chair, sit on the floor if you want. Close your eyes and notice your breath. Notice yourself breathing in and breathing out. Have distracting thoughts, but let them go. Let them go. I took a yoga class one time where the yogi said, watch the thoughts walk across the stage and then leave. So breathe slowly through your nose for five counts. Maybe hold your breath for a count of five. This will, will help you relax all over and just focus on something that is vital to your existence, which is breathing. Breathe in and calm yourself. Think relaxing thoughts. Try to think nothing at all. But if you're, you know, if distracting thoughts cross, let them cross that stage and then leave. Right. A third, a third recommendation by the Harvard, Harvard Health is to try to find a regular practice like yoga, tai chi, meditation, or just taking time to relax. You're dealing with, you're being a helper. 24 seven, take an hour out of your day to practice something that is going to center you, make you feel relaxed, like Sherry's hike. Right. I wish I'd had time. <laughs> <laughs> um, make eating well and getting quality sleep a priority. It's really, really tempting to work through lunch. 
to um, just grab a donut. Make sure you're eating well. You're eating, you're putting quality food in your body because food is fuel. And if you don't have quality fuel, you're not going to have the energy that you need to care for the people around you that need you. Um, I wish I had been more mindful of that. I did not have a good breakfast. So they also recommend overuse of alcohol since alcohol can both increase inflammation in your body and disrupt your quality of sleep. I know that can be hard when you're super, super stressed, but it, it's really important and more beneficial to your overall health if you reduce or avoid alcohol at all possible costs. You know, I'm going to get some hate on that one, but <laughs> I can attest to the fact that it works. Dropping alcohol out of your routine really improves your quality of sleep. It, it lifts up your energy level and your mood, your overall mood is improved. So right. try to avoid or reduce your alcohol consumption. And the last one is I feel so, so important. And we, we often as caregivers neglect it. Remain socially connected. Find people who have similar lifestyles and make a friend. Find somebody that you can talk to on the phone for 10 minutes and just bent about your days. Also, listening to someone else and being a, hi, being a caregiver for a peer is helpful because you can become each other's confidants and you understand what, what, what each other is going through. So. Absolutely. I just just remember to take care of yourself. Fuzzy visitor. Hi. Say hi. All right. So All right. those are the five things recommended by the Harvard School of Medicine to provide self-care for the caregiver um, because you are the most important person. You can't help anyone if you're not feeling well. If you get sick or if you're having a down day, you're not going to be helpful to anyone. So take right. care of yourself. Absolutely. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, please. Help us get out into that uh, YouTube universe. That's right. Watching our videos can be a moment of self-care. Right. And if you'd also like to see our TED Talk, I will link that down below. So Absolutely. you can all see that. Um, my name's Sherry. I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome. And this is my Roberta. Uh, yeah. My Roberta. <laughs> You only get one. I'm Roberta. I'm a special education teacher. Um, we, we love you. We appreciate you. Um, again, push all those buttons and see, drop us a comment if you want to hear about some another topic that might be of interest to you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.